Standard Deviation. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Standard Deviation Podcast. I'm your host, Simo, and I'm joined by Juliana. How are you? I'm great, Simo. Nice to see you. It's been a while. Yes, it's been a long time. <laughs> hey, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. That's today. No, happy International Women's Day to everyone that identifies yes. as a woman and celebrates this amazing day. And even if you don't, if you're not sure, like if you're not sure what you identify as, just exactly. enjoy the day. Because it's a beautiful day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, my son and I went to um, to the library yesterday and we got a, uh, we, we bought some, you know, flowers and, and macaroon things, you know, those really oh, good ones. Those. Yeah. We ended up eating most of them, but we didn't buy them <laughs> for the women. <laughs> and, they, and we had a nice breakfast today. So. In Romania, you also celebrate Mother's Day today. So it's not oh, really? Just in, yeah, it's not just International Women's Day, it's Mother's Day. Oh, that's interesting. But both my kids and husband forgot. I, I, I hope they hear me saying this. Right? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. I'm used to it. But hold on. So bundling Women's Day and Mother's Day, that sounds like super weird. <laughs> it sounds very cheap. And it kind yeah. of associates one with the other. There is, it's wow. Welcome to Romania. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it is. I had to call my mom the first thing I did. Was to yeah. call her this morning, so yeah. Anyway, yeah, that doesn't like, that doesn't sound very very modern. It's very communist stuff. Like you forget yeah. we were under the communist uh, domination for fifty. True, years. mothers are the baby baby creators. Exactly. So the yeah. communists and you need lots very... of babies in communist countries. Yes. <laughs> how did okay. we how did we get to this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, but, we can talk yeah, about something so that's it's... almost as bad as a communist regime, and that's the constant mode in GA four. Oh my God! Yeah, so I I saw you wrote an article. Okay, so I, spill the tea. Spill the no, tea. No, I just have to rant about this because I I like I I want to stop writing about constant mode. I really do. I I I don't enjoy the discourse around it. Like I I don't. It's it's weird. It's it's superficial. It's it's misdirected. It's just it's just weird. But anyway, it's such an interesting technological phenomenon, like what Google is doing with, with constant pings and what kind of data is being stripped off and how that signal is being. It's such an interesting engineering challenge that I can't help myself, like just digging into those libraries and seeing how it works. Um, but it does create kind of, I think it creates unnecessary noise around the phenomenon because there's, I think that if, <laughs> if we didn't have people like me in the community, like while we do probably a lot of documentation, I think much of this stuff would be much easier. Like there's an unnecessary complication that comes from showing what happens under the hood. Um, and, and the more we, people like me, like the more I look into stuff, the more I realize how I got some things wrong earlier and I have to issue like corrections. Like the whole thing about yesterday was that I had previously been saying that, you know, if, if you, if, if, if a user grants consent on a page, then you should, for safety, you should just resend all the events that you had kind of buffered before that, just to make sure that they appear in their standard reports. Well, now after testing, it appears that Google actually reprocesses all those events automatically, so you don't have to send anything again. I all saw the that, that yeah, was you sent. don't need to resend the, the Yeah, the which, is, which is great. It makes the setup so much easier because you don't have to write these really complicated triggers like... Uh, fire this tag only if consent was previously denied, but now it's granted only if the page view wasn't already blah, blah, blah. So it's much, much easier. But it's because I was so deep in the weeds, I, I, I made these false statements and now I have to kind of correct them. So it's, I don't know. I'm, I think this is even worse than the universal analytics sunset, like from the point of view of how much noise to signal ratio there is in the communities right now. It is, and it's very big confusion. It into, is, Into everything. Sure. I'm, 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 I'm so grateful that i don't have to do this anymore because so like but so what is the bottom line now like i was going through your article i almost understood everything but that doesn't uh, look bad on you it looks bad on me but that's another story for another day so like um, basically you you're saying that the setups are much more simpler right and well, it, uh, like 
if you're doing the so-called advanced consent mode, which means you're sending pings when users have not consented, which yeah. I'm just going to say it right here. If you're in, if you have visitors from the EU, I think you should be very, very, very careful if you want to enable that feature because there's such a big risk in collecting anything from users who have not yet consented. Yeah, especially if the vendor you're collecting them to is a vendor like Google, who is let's not let's put it like this they're not exactly the the <laughs> they're not exactly angels or pure citizens when it comes to handling data streams in the back in like downstream like they have purpose limitation issues in dragging them up and down the courts so i would be very very careful in implementing advanced consent mode so and that advanced consent mode is this idea of sending like so quote unquote anonymous pings when consent is denied and then Google but, uses those for modeling. We we all know that those they're not anonymous. But it's so stitchy, though. It's so like it's like stitching things together. You know, yeah. like it's so. That's just it. We don't know how like like the amount of data that gets sent with these pings is just r ridiculous. There's a lot of it, and absolutely, it's not anonymous. There's enough to triangulate the user. So, all of this that we've been talking thus far applies to advanced consent mode. And the point yeah. is that. A very normal situation is that you have a consent management platform which loads with a delay. You know, there's an asynchronous delay. You download it over the network and it takes a while. So it takes a while for a consent state to be determined. But you don't want to delay your tags because that gets complicated. So you fire your tags anyway. Then consent is granted. And what Google does is it goes through all of those hits on the same page that were sent when consent was denied. And it kind of flips them over to granted state after all. So it's just a it's it's kind of an understandable approach. Yeah. But it only applies to if you're actually sending those constant denied pings. If you're using basic constant mode, which is the kind of way that I would recommend you use it, where you just block everything and until content is granted and use constant granted as like the zero state. Maybe yeah, even yeah, low yeah. GTM only at that time, not before. Then this is this is kind of irrelevant because then then you're just then you're doing regular tagging and regular triggering, but you're just waiting for consent to be granted before beginning. This, so anyway, this, uh. no, but this reminds me of something I saw yesterday on uh, Twitter with um, it was uh, from the uh, IAB. Me, me saying. Oh exactly. man! I know what you're gonna <laughs> but say. no, listen to this. Listen to this. So basically, they say <laughs> they have oh a groundbreaking God. way to um to link you know the to find out to identify users and they say id bridging a technique where ad tech firm approximates who a user might be approximates yeah. who a user might be in a cookie-less environment like safari by linking the user to their identity on chrome what mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like basically is you 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 use your uh, computer on safari and your phone on chrome so they are using ID bridging where they approximate who a user might be. Like, what are, like, like I'm, I'm like this uh, right now. And I read this, um, uh, Miles, Miles is so, so, so fun. Miles is like the best on this stuff. And he was saying that cookie deprecation sparks tension between buy and sell side in IAB tech lab. So it's it's not just the consent; it's also the cookie thing on top. But I liked what Jen Jen did. Uh, Jen Cons, I'm talking about Jen Cons mm. here, from Thirty Three Sticks. She had a great thread on Twitter. I don't know if you yeah. saw it. I, I commented on it. Yeah, like it's 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 so true. You know, mm. it's like we already were prepared for this stuff. But the problem is, I guess, the technology thing, which I I I do think that it's good that you are going and doing this stuff because if you wouldn't do it nobody would know we were just like <laughs> click all that so, stuff ignorance is bliss for sure in general yeah. but like if you wouldn't do this stuff how would we know so i i gotta say that's that's not even the iab blunder i was talking about like they did oh. two stupid things yesterday oh two stupid <laughs> okay what's the other one the other the other one is this hilarious thing that um so on March 1st, um, so a week ago, IAB tweeted that, um, you know, th there's been this uh, lawsuit against the IAB for the longest time regarding their real-time bidding set up with the, um, uh, the transparency and constant framework constant string. Okay, yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah. basically when, you, when you grant constant under this framework, you get assigned a string that has all your constant preferences en encoded. And so the, the lawsuit was a GDPR lawsuit against them because this is obviously personal data. It's unique enough to exactly target you. Of course. And so it's been going on for years. 
And now, a week ago, <laughs> IAB tweets that, hey, we have some inside information. Finally, this ridiculous lawsuit was dismissed. Um, the Hamburg Regional Court did entirely dismissed the case and blah, 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 blah. And they were like super condescending that, hey, suck, you know, screw you. We were right all along and it's not a privacy breach. And so the, the decision was published yesterday. And it's completely opposite what IAB was saying. The, the, the European courts found IAB to be in violation and they found the TCF to be personal data. So now they're screwed because every single downstream system on the internet that uses the TC string, which is basically all the ad vendors, have now been illegitimate, illegitimately collecting personal data. So it's like, oh what a huge self-own. Like, what kind of inside information did they think they have? Because the courts completely ruled the opposite. This is like, oh, my God. I, I have, like... I have the lowest amount of respect for uh, <laughs> for IAB for many reasons, but this is like oh, I didn't this is rock see bottom. this one. I only saw the one that I shared with we, we can might have, we might can should have possibly approximate who you are. What yeah, we have to. Uh, so we have to add this to the show notes. But there's this just super 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 intelligent uh, security researcher called Zach Edwards. Um, we'll add his Twitter handle into the show notes. Um, so he does he does all these. He's done like amazing, um, like stings, you know, where he where he reveals how a company has been doing illicit data collection, for example, just by using client side auditing. But he he's got some nice acerbic comments about this. I <laughs> about like this that, yeah. And, and, yeah. It, and it's worth it because everything is a mess right now. Everything it is. is a mess. It's yeah. And like what I'm wondering, okay, you know. I'm talking about people that just got into the <laughs> this uh, the worst time in the world that they yeah. found to get into analytics or digital marketing. I'm just like wondering how can everyone keep up with this stuff? Because you're learning yeah. the basics, right? But then you also, besides learning the basics, you also need to learn what's going on because all the basics are not based on the current present. So yeah. like it's so hard for people to keep up with this stuff, even for me. Like I read this stuff, I freak out, I go and I try to communicate to the client, like, what what can we do, Simo? Like, what's the solution here? Because like I'm I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I don't what know. Do you do? Just uh, I don't Change know. Change careers. <laughs> Maybe. No, it's a it's a self-preservation tactic just to isolate you from the stuff that you're not comfortable with working on. Like that's that's one of the reasons why like ten years ago I decided I'm never gonna do ads. Like I'm just not I don't like it. I don't like that world. I absolutely do not like it. I don't I think there's there's lots of engineering, interesting engineering aspects to it, and there's yeah. a lot of players who do it correctly and have a have a wonderful way of going about it. Um, a lot of like community people who do it great, but every single time something like this happens, or I read <laughs> something about you know display advertising, I get chills in my back, and I get this. My internal compass is like going like crazy. This the this doesn't sound kosher. Like there's something wrong with this. Yeah. So I I have no I like. I understand that if you're working in an agency, you'll, you're you're always going to have to work on things that you might not agree with. And, you know, I don't have a solution to that except to switch jobs or switch careers if that's not your thing. I think we just you either have to grow a really, really thick skin um, and just accept the fact that you need to know a little bit about everything or then just, you know, yeah. do something else with your life. That's what I did. But I don't know if it, if it works for others. I mean, you kind of did, but you didn't because you're still here. <laughs> Well, doing... I'm still here ranting about this stuff, yeah. but like, yeah, and I can caveat like when I just said that I have the lowest opinion about IAB, I, that, that, that was unnecessarily harsh. I don't. Uh, I just think that many of their out, output is is kind of weird. I know that they have some really, really solid engineers. And ultimately, we're all trying to solve the problem of of how to fund an open web. Yeah. Um. So so in that, but yeah, I'm, I'm just glad I'm not. I'm really, really glad I'm not ha having to be the person to who goes to the clients and customers and tells them yeah, how sucks. to deal with this. I could just stay on a very general level in, in my LinkedIn post and say, oh, you know, fix it, fix it. That's fine. <laughs> fix it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, no, it's going to be all right. You know, in a couple of years, we'll all be just having a beer and laughing about this time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. True, true. So talking about bad decisions, Simo. <laughs> <laughs> rant over. Another rant, rant begins. Another rant. Yeah. I um one of because as you know I'm trying to stay the fuck away from anything mm. that has to do with engineering and data collection. 
uh, because it's driving me insane and I already, I'm already i already crazy. I don't need more. But I do deal with my own level of crazy with, uh, with, with conversion uh, uh, rate optimization and experimentation and so on, whatever we're calling it these days. When it comes to bad decisions, a lot of the times what happens is people don't do research before. Mm. So it's like I get frustrated because I get cases when people just come to me and say, hey, I want to test this. I want to do this. I want. I, I think this test would work. And I'm asking them, like, why do you think this would work? Oh, because Amazon did it. Oh, because Booking.com mm. did it. And you and, and like think about it, Amazon, Walmart, um, Booking, all of these guys are like, you know, huge, giant enterprise companies. And you're an e-commerce company that just sells for the last three years. And you're selling, I don't know, because it's International Women's Day, you're selling jewelry and cosmetics and whatever. And you want to do what Booking.com does. So it's it's a lot of people in, in my world. What is very, very annoying is that everyone is pushing this narrative of best practices. Mm. I'm sure you probably saw how I take the, the, the shit a lot of times on, the, on LinkedIn mm. when people just go around and they think best practices work. And best practices are okay if you want to, you know, like understand user experience. And because, of course, every website has uh, standards and, um, uh, you know, standards for how websites should be built, standards for buttons, for layout, for structure. So from an engineering perspective, a website does have to follow some best practices mm. to make sure it's usable. But from a business perspective and marketing perspective, you have to make sure that you do what makes sense for your business. So to that point, I have one of the most, we, we, not me, we, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm so, okay, I'm so selfish, so selfish. We have one of the best people that ever did user research in uh, in the industry we have else um and uh, i'm excited to talk to her today and i know simo probably this is gonna be interesting for you because you hate feedback <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i'm looking forward to this for sure um yeah did you get I, any I... feedback lately that you like <laughs> <laughs> well i only read the positive ones so of course I, i've got a lot of feedback um yeah i don't know what it is it's just it's it's I think, you know, I, we, we, we definitely have to talk about this with else, but I think it's just this idea that, you know, when I'm looking at data, it's, you know, it's normalized, the, the, the peaks and the troughs are all, all cleared out. It's, it's kind of trend, you see trend lines, you see things are going slightly up, slightly down. It's, it's non-controversial. Like yeah. it, it, it's, it confirms. It's safe, uh, right? It's, <laughs> yeah, and it's really easy for me to ground myself in that. <clears throat> like it's really easy for yeah. me to say that, yeah, we're doing fine. Then when I read, you know, let's say we're doing fine. Then I read a feedback that says like, you know, this is shit. Like this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> it's difficult for me to reconcile that with what I just saw on the trend lines. Now, obviously, if somebody writes like that, then I can ignore it because that kind of language just means that they're riled up and they're they're probably not giving an unbiased answer. But I'm just wondering like how, how or why should I trust, um, you know, qualitative data that is so perpendicular to what it, what I was collecting in the, in the quantitative data. Like, what can I do with that? Because that's, that, that's always going to be the case. Like you're going to get answers that uh, might deviate. Um, like deviate. when we're just talking about sentiment, obviously qualitative feedback has, its, has great use cases for like, you know, hypothesis design where you, they say maybe this part of the site could be a bit easier to use. And then, okay, that's a good idea. Let's test that. It's not negative feedback. It's just like constructive criticism. So I'm yeah. wondering like how, how to, and, and the other thing is like, what 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 the hell gives uh, gives some random internet user the right to tell me how to optimize my site? Like, how do I trust the person who gave the feedback that they are qualified to do this? Like, like they know what kind of pressure a regular service designer is under. And and yeah, anyway, you it's sound like be my developers. <laughs> yeah. When you know what I, what I tell them that makes sense for them, like I say that qualitative data is like parameters to an event. It mm. gives you context in how that thing happened. That's that's how I use it. That's how I go to developers and yeah, engineers. Mm. It's like, if you want to think, why, why do we need qualitative data? It's like parameters. You need parameters because parameters are the only things that give context in you know, what way something happened, right? With an event. Yeah. So they were like, ah, okay, I get it. <laughs> so see, even you, even you like mellow down a bit. Yeah. Because I'm speaking your language. But no, it's... It's true. I mean, it's, it's it's very hard to sell research inside of companies. Very hard to sell qualitative data because, you know, it's unstructured data. It's not as predictable mm -hmm. and safe and you know, normalized as the uh, quant data is. 
but it's needed because it gives you context into why things happen in a way they happen. And of course, even if it's unstructured data, you do need statistical significance, even if it's mm, qualitative. Because otherwise, if you get, if you have a hundred people that love your experience and cite and two people that hate it, you're not gonna go and make a change for two people. All the respect to those two people, but at the same time, you need to, you know, you need to have some sort of like, um, I guess, yeah. gravity and weight to it. But before we invite else. Uh, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable because I'm going to have you do the, the Simorad. Oh, yes. Choo, choo, choo. And I have no music for you today unless you want me to sing. No, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> I, I, I can sing some Pearl Jam. Even flow. <laughs> <laughs> that was very good. That's, that's it. <laughs> it was, wasn't quite Adam Sandler, but that was very good. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. Yes. So hello, everybody. Uh, it's Simo <laughs> from Simmer. Uh, we have we are an online course, technical marketing online course tuition platform. We still have to figure out what we are, um, <laughs> and we have online courses in technical marketing for you to buy and 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 view at your leisure, quizzes, stuff like that. Um, if you want to buy our courses with a small discount, you can use the code D V A T E V I A T E for 10% off individual course purchases does not apply to bundles. And we just released the technical marketing handbook. So you can find that on the handbook.teamseamer.com site. It's completely free and it will help you understand at least half of the weird stuff that Julianne and I talk on this podcast. And it will help, it help me too also. <laughs> to <understand> yes. <laughs> and me as well, <laughs> me as well, for sure. And also, if you want to test your uh, might and strength in technical marketing, if you think you know everything, there is a free test that you oh, can yes. uh, take to see how knowledgeable you really are about technical marketing. At least according to Simmer standards. Exactly, which are high. So go Very high and standards, do it. for sure, like <laughs> everything in my life. Cool, 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 cool. Well, let's have Elsan. Yes. <laughs> Yay! We finally have Els here. This was long time in the making. Exactly. Finally. Welcome, how are you? I am so happy to be here. Thank you for, um, yeah, for having me on today on a very special day, International. Yes, it is a very special I don't day. know. I don't know when it goes out, but we don't either. It, but it's a special day for sure. <laughs> uh, and 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 it's always good to celebrate women. So whenever you're hearing this, it's always good to celebrate yes. women. Yes, exactly. Yes, Not we're going to celebrate International Women's Day every day. Did you know that in Romania they bundle it together with the Mother's Day, <laughs> so they don't even have separate days for the two. They yes, bundle them true. together. Uh, that is extremely painful and it is. really, it's really, disturbing. really, really wrong. That is like saying any woman who is not a mother yes. is not a. M oh my God! Welcome yeah. to communism. Mm. <laughs> mm. Worrying, another, really worrying. An, an, that's another check in the pros column for communism, right? Mm. Yes. Mm. So mm. 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 Okay. okay. Anyway, we 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 we're not going to bundle those together. So it's Happy International Women's Day to all the all the again to all the women who are listening and who identify as such. Yes. And Alice, yes. I'm so happy that you're here because I have the most painful troubles on bad things. Question: <laughs> Bad things. <laughs> Lay Why? your bad things on me, Juliana. Bring it on. <laughs> Therapy begins. Why is it so hard to sell user research? <laughs> that's, all, that's all I want. I think we should start from there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why is it so hard? Why? So, Simo, before we, we introduced you, me and Simo were talking about it, and he said, I'm going to call him out. He said, why should I care about what random people on the internet say about, you know, my stuff when they're not invested in building the business? <laughs> Simo! <laughs> Simo. I was Simo. being acerbic. I was being acerbic. You, I, you. I, I, I believe that only 50%. <laughs> rude, rude, rude. See, and this is typical because, yeah. Uh, how am I going to say this to you nicely, Simo? You don't have no notes. You, you, this, this really shows, this is a typical response of somebody who doesn't understand what user research really is. Yes. Did, did, you have a, did, did you have a sound effect for this? Yes, like hold on. Siri? <laughs> there you go. What was that? So, yeah. So, <laughs> and, and, but, but that's fine. Uh, it, user research is not everybody's world, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is my world, though. And um, typically, people think user research is asking people, indeed, randos on the internet, as you so lovingly call them, Simo. <laughs> <laughs> um, what they think, you know, and while they know nothing about my business, 
that is not research. That is bullshit. Yes. User research is not about asking people what they think. User research is not about going to people and asking them how should, you know, uh, what should the strategy for my business be? No, this is why, you know, mm. th this is you. What you can ask people is, you know, what are they on your website to accomplish? What exactly is it that their problem is that they're trying to solve with your product? Because when you get in, when you get more factual information from them, like, you know, what is the problem they're trying to solve? If they're on your website, what is clear or unclear to them? Um, what is holding them back from buying from you? These are not opinions. These are more like facts. Mm. And I think, um, and this is where I think analytics, data and analytics, and more question-based, I don't necessarily even want to call it qualitative because for some surveys that you do, you need you know, volume. Uh, but where you really ask people about the why of their behavior and it just, oh man, I, 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 I just get so happy when I see, <laughs> oh, we see this in analytics and now we did the survey that we saw that it completely builds on that right. and it gives you, the re research gives you the tools to create better hypotheses, create better theories about, oh, okay. Oh, this is why this is a problem. Oh, and this could be a possible solution. All righty. Yeah. This is why research, this is why you too, Simo, et tu, Simo, should care about user research. I have to, I, 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 you know, you're absolutely right. And thank you so much for calling that, calling out the BS. I, I do want to uh, get into your good graces now by saying that after I made that stupid comment, I did move on to hypothesis design and say that this is actually a great way to validate like user paths and, and, and try to figure out where the, where the bottlenecks are and so on. So you know, I'm, I'm not all bad. I'm not all bad. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You've, 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 you've got, you've gone up one level already. Yes. I'm so. a level zero now, basically. I, I went up one <laughs> level to level zero. So I, I do want to, I do want to grab something you mentioned about, um, you know, quant and qualitative, like data and analytics and, and this kind of complementing that approach. Mm -hmm. um, wh wh what do you do when, when there's a, there's a divergence, like when, when you have a trend line that goes like this, and then you have the user research results that go like this on the other direction, do you get that situation often, or does it mean that you've poorly designed the research? or the poorly designed the data, where do you think that could stem from? Hmm. I have to say um, that, that hmm. from what you're describing, I would like, can you, can you be more concrete? Do you have a more concrete example? Well, if I, if I, let's say I've built an e-commerce funnel in the data and it shows me like a fairly nice linear drop-off, like, you know, mm -hmm. you have a, 100 people view a product, 50 add them to the cart, 25 check out and 10 buy or something. And this mm -hmm. is kind of consistent. Mm -hmm. But then I consistently see in, in now I'm using things like, you know, like recorders or heat maps mm -hmm. or whatever, and or doing mm -hmm. surveys, I, I consistently hear that there are problems with the checkout and people aren't able to buy or they, they don't like it, that it's multi-page, they want it to be one page. Or again, like, we'll talk about opinions again or sentiment maybe, but... Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing in this case? Mm, mm. See, yeah, what you're saying now, they don't like it that it's multi-step. They want it one step. Ignore. Yeah. Okay. Ignore. No. Um, if you see a consistent drop off in steps, um, one, this is, I usually see. Um, yeah, it's normal. Yeah. And, and also there might be different reasons in each step why people drop off. So doing mm. a survey and connecting the whenever we survey, we also capture the URL of the page. Um, nice. So we know when people are saying something, so you know what stage they're at, what page they're at, you know, which uh, uh, source they came from. So you get a little bit more context to their to their answer as well. Uh, and so it might be that people that the 20% the, the, the of people that you're losing in step one are for reasons X and Y. And mm. the people that drop off in step two are for reason Apple, oh, something completely different. And that is what the survey tells you. And then you can see like, oh, okay. So maybe we should change this. Right. And sometimes problems in the funnel can't be solved in the funnel. Mm. Sometimes you see problems in the funnel that you need to solve on different pages. Um, 
for for some clients, it can be you have to solve it on the homepage if you have a one service business. Uh, for right. some clients, it means you have to solve it on your detail on your product detail page. Um, again, it depends on what the input exactly is. Analytics only tells you people are dropping off here, they're dropping off here, they're dropping off there, but you don't get an insight into yeah. you know, why is this happening. And also, user success recordings can be helpful if it's about an interface. If yeah. the problem is an interface problem, then you can see like, oh, they're not even scrolling to the bit where, oh, oh, I see, I put this terrible, ridiculous upsell thing in the way this is holding them back. That is what user recordings can show you. User recordings can't show you, I'm afraid to click this button because I don't know and I don't trust this company. That is, that is, you can't, that, that is not yeah. visible. And that is something that people will tell you in a survey. Uh, yeah. And so that is very helpful. That's a, so I, before I'm going to let Julia know, jump in, I have one, one example that absolutely confirms that. And this is from our, uh, you know, we sell online courses and, and we sell them to um, citizens, like individuals in the EU. So when you go to the cart and you went to the checkout page, then you suddenly see the VAT added to that price. Yeah. And people are taking like, whoa, what just happened? Like, I'm just, yeah. I have to pay more. Yeah. And we realized that we don't actually mention this anywhere because we, we have yeah. so many visitors from the US who don't care about VAT and we have so yeah. many businesses. So we should mention that outside the funnel that, hey, by the way, this is, might not be the final price you're paying to us. But we only found that out because people, I mean, people are still buying, so we were happy. But we only found out later that people are really surprised that there's this thing called VAT in the European Union. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And if, if people don't tell you, you don't know. Sorry. No, yeah, no, exactly. no, no, it's fine. Exactly. It's difficult to prove a negative if, if nobody actually just, yeah. I like what you said that it might be a system problem, but might be a outside of system problem when it comes to, you know, the, the user behavior. And it makes me ask you something. So one of the other steps to find out besides what's going on, you know, besides survey, it's also doing heuristic evaluations constantly, constantly and having multiple evaluators, not just one because you're not the user and it doesn't make, it doesn't matter if you're, if you have opinions, it's, they're like assholes. Everyone has one. You have to have more assholes at the table. Um, <laughs> that's so bad. But basically the heuristic evaluation is very important, but a lot of people think heuristic evaluations are overrated. What are your thoughts on heuristic evaluations? Um, if you're, well, again, oh man, I'm bringing all the nuance today. I'm not known for this. Um, <laughs> okay. We bring the, bring the best and worst in people, me and Simo. Ah, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. Um, is a heuristic <laughs> evaluation valuable? Yes. If your website is absolutely, totally shitty and is not built on what, you know, a good website, a good e-commerce should look like, then a heuristic evaluation is totally valuable. Mm -hmm. Totally. You've got your basics, right? If you know, you've put all your interface elements where they're supposed to be, if you've built the code properly, then heuristic evaluation becomes less valuable and research becomes more valuable. I would say the more straightforward also your business is, like if you're selling shoes, mm -hmm. if you're selling clothes, that's a pretty straightforward business. If you're selling personal alarms for senior citizens to keep them safe uh, and to trigger it when they fall, much more complicated. Also in the psyche of the buyer, a much more complicated process that's going on. You're no longer just thinking like, I like those sneakers. They will go well with my new jeans. No. So <laughs> And, and also the buyer, who's going to buy, there's just, it, it, it all depends. If it's a simple website, um, then yes. Um, if it's terrible, then yes. If, if it's a more complicated business, if you've got the fundamentals right, then user research very quickly proves its value. Mm, mm, mm. yeah and it's also crazy because there's so many like well-established companies and i'm not calling names on nobody and i'm sorry if you're listening to the podcast i might delete this or not later but there they are they are there are, there are a lot of you would say should be established by now and follow you know uh, standards and uh, uh -huh. the word is hard but you know the standards of ux and websites and th they don't 
Like they really don't. And you do this type of heuristic evaluation and you notice like different elements on the website and modules on the website actually stop people from taking the action because it's the classic, you know, BJ Fog model. The more you increase motivation and reduce friction, the more people are able to do what they need to do. So it does give you insights, but again, it's only towards the system. It's not towards like the empathy, emotions and the why is from that perspective. So in a way, I think right now talking to you, I think heuristic evaluation is more, it's not that qual. It's, it's really not that qual. It's more like, you know, more practical, more safe. It's because it's, you know, it's, it's related to the system, not to the person per se. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's really cool. Sorry, that was just for me. <laughs> hey, hey, can, can we explain to all the, all the stupid, bald, middle-aged Finnish guys in the okay, podcast, <laughs> what is heuristic evaluation? Okay, you go, else because you're the uh, guest. No, I, I, to, to, to keep it very simple for Finnish bald guys, uh, just like <laughs> an expert evaluation. Like there is, there is a, I mean, there's there's a there, there's a set of standards in 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 UI in UX. Where does the logo go? What should happen when you click on the logo, etc.? Uh, what is a breadcrumb? Where should it be? What should it look like? What should it do, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. How should filters work, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, all of those things, you know, they are pretty well established. And when you build a website, you should you should absolutely definitely follow those rules. <laughs> And again, indeed, a lot of a lot of people don't. A lot of people go like, "Oh, but no, let's let's get creative." Yeah. And I go like, "No, no, 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 no." There's room for creativity, absolutely, but there isn't. But not everywhere. Uh, I always, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So you have to know when to do things the way people expect them to work, and where you can go a little bit not so. Um, right. Yeah. So those yeah. are the quote unquote, best practices, if you want to call them such. Me and Nels don't like the words best practices. Well, I'm, I'm being provocative here because we just talked about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, me and Nels. Yeah. But, We're but those would be the closest analogy, right? Like but if, there's if you standards. Think about... So it's like, it's like JavaScript in a way. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, no, seriously. It's like, okay, you have the structural, you know, website, the way you built it, the code that you use, the WordPress, you use templates. But there are some rules that are called heuristics principles. So there are some principles for how a website should a, uh, should look and feel so people can use it. So that's kind of, it, it goes into usability, actually, Simo. That's my yes. probably easier. It's kind of like how usable is a website. So there's some rules. As uh, uh, Elsie is saying, you need to have navigation, you need to have breadcrumbs so you know how to come back. So there's some things like recognition rather than recall. Uh, what else? Uh, user freedom, um, error prevention and error recovery. Very underrated. That's my favorite, actually, principle. Like, for instance, oh. Simo, if you build a website... If, if if people have errors in using your website, you need to show them how to recover from that error and how no. to go back. <laughs> no, they, yes. they need to they need to open the JavaScript console, the browsers, developer tools, and debug that error and send me the report. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of like I'm that. not going to cuddle my visitors. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Oh, oh my god, I I I, I remembered you as much ni- you in my memory you were much nicer, Sima. I must not I know, have known and probably, I must probably, not have known you well enough. <laughs> and probably smarter as well in your memory, but it's just not yeah. It's it's uh, it's two kids two uh, kids and lack of sleep is is not uh it's just uh, <laughs> flattening you know, the curve for me. Uh, no, but I completely agree with with, uh, with 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 you, Juliana, here. The word best practice is is a little is a little fraught because what people I, I see a lot of people mistake common practices for best practices. And this is why the word practice, you know, these are really, these are standards. These are guide. These are, these are really, these are guidelines. These are, this is what, this is how you're supposed to do it. It's not like a best practice. This is how it's done. When you build a car, you do not think about where shall I put the pedal of the brake, <laughs> the left, the right. Let's be creative <laughs> with this shit. Do not get creative with that shit. You know, <laughs> there are some things you should not get creative with. And you see the most fundamental stuff going wrong still. Mm. And then people go, oh, we did an A-B test. Yeah. Basically, doing it right is then the, the B. And oh, my God, it won. Yeah. You built it wrong in the first place. And it's very sad. 
And, mm -hmm. oh, I should be more understanding. No, I'm going to take a step back. Uh, I really should be more understanding. But it does frustrate me that yeah. the basics, that the fundamentals, I should not call them the basics, because then people, again, think it's that they're It's very difficult easy. because you can't really say no, any no. words anymore. No, no. It's the fundamentals, the fundamental yeah. standards and guiding principles. This is what you need to start with. And then you can tweak and improve through research. But it's not like, let's build something shit and then have a look at, <laughs> at the standards and see, oh, yeah, that's an easy fix. That's a, yeah. Sorry. No. Yeah. Those sound like quick wins to me, like low hanging yeah. fruit. Let's build a crap web that's website. That's how low hanging fruits came up, Simo. That's exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. how. And then we'll hire, an, hire a consultant to fix it all and they'll get amazing results by just, like me, they t they'll take it to level zero. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you don't yeah. know Simo, but the experimentation, the, 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 in the community is very dramatic. Is like it as dramatic it, as the SEO community? No. Oh my God. Well, oh, okay. I, no, 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 I mean, no, Juliana, no, no. I, it depends, depends on, depends, depends. It's a lot of elitism. I don't like it. It's no. ugh, elitism, but, um, back to more useful for the listener conversation how dare you how dare <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying to, to be user user attuned to the user right now to, to our listeners um i want to ask you something like for people that are just starting out in the field in experimentation and mm -hmm. digital marketing and so on mm -hmm. whatever we're calling it these days mm -hmm. i always say that uh if everyone is talking about people oh i don't even know where that came from yeah if everyone is talking about uh, statistics and maths and p-values and they just equate uh, experimentation to just that, how is it going to be easy for these people to understand user research and U UX and user and usability? Like, how do we get to that? Because most people don't speak about this stuff. Like, they don't. Huh. I, I think it depends on on the bubble you're in and yeah, wave that bubble away. Yeah. Uh, Cause I really think there are, there, 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 we, we have our own little silos. It's like, um, there's, there's SEO and within SEO, there's also li like little silos within SEO yeah. uh, and within CRO, there's silos within CRO. And we have the people who talk about P values and, and underpowered tests and, oh, all of that, which is important. It's important that somebody in your company understands this. Yeah. And this is not the fundamental thing about experimentation. Neither is user research. Of course. It they, is, all... they all work together. It's not because this is my niche that this is the most important niche to understand. No, you, you, need, you need all of them to work together because what we're doing is and did I, hello, are you still here? You yes. are. Um, <laughs> sorry. I just, just had a brain, a brain fuzz moment. Um, you need all of them to work together because what we're doing, I like to hope in experimentation, at least <laughs> what you're doing when you're doing it right, is you're helping the business. You're making sure your customers are happier and you're making sure the business is more successful in an ethical way. That, in my view, is what experimentation is about. It's about mm -hmm. helping businesses be more successful, have more happy customers. And all mm -hmm. you, and you do need to know stats because otherwise you're going to run a B test and say yeah. like, well, <laughs> um, 10 people, 10 people you got five in A, conversions. 10 people in A, 20 people in B, yeah. massive win. You'd be surprised. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of LinkedIn posts when it they is. had three three conversions. <laughs> like... I understand, but we have to say we have the same problem in in user research. I did a survey. I see the survey and I go like, yeah, call this a survey. <laughs> um, I'm and same with analytics. Oh yeah, we we had somebody. Our analytics is set up. No, they just pushed all of the yeah. turn on, turn on, turn on, turn on. What do you mean you need four days to to to, to set up my set up my my, my analytics? Well, if yeah. we're going to have a think about what you really, really want to get out of it and ha be intentional about how we're going to do this to make the most of it out of you, if we're going to document it properly, then it's going to take time. But, you know, it's like to the untrained eye, if you're not an expert in something, it's very hard to tell what's good and what's not good. Uh, and sure. this is why I, I, have, I have an analogy. I compare user research to mushrooms. 
Um, but but it actually works for everything. It's like if you just go out into the forest and you pick some mushrooms, don't eat them. Because <laughs> they might kill you. You know, it is very hard to tell a poisonous mushroom from a mushroom. You can just fry up with some garlic and some some butter and just, you know, really enjoy. Mm. And you have to really understand what it is that you're looking at. And it, it's sometimes really little things yeah. that they yeah. can really totally, you know, make your data quite literally poisonous because mm. it is wrong data. Uh, if you measure shit wrong, you know, you're going to make bad decisions. And I think that the, the, what I think everybody should should try to do is be interested in all of the things. Like I'm interested in, in, in stats. Am I a statistician? Fudge no. Uh, do I know a, a lot about it? I would say no. Um, analytics, do I know a lot about it? I would say no. But I try to mm. know a little bit about it. So I also know, you know, like, oh, this looks a little suspicious, but I have no yeah. idea how to go about, you know, digging deep into that. This is where I go to my expert. But I think it's important to be well-rounded and to just know your expertise is a tiny part of everything. Amen. Amen. Really exactly. Because really it's music to our ears because <laughs> we were just talking about the importance of being T-shaped. So this actually yeah. is a great LinkedIn promo video. So thank you for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Else can send the bill later. Uh, one like observation is that we had Ton Wessling here as well before, yeah. and 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 so now we have like two experimentation experts, and they've you've both said the same thing, and I think yeah. that. What, like you, you've both said that experimentation culture, and I'm paraphrasing, is is like the purest way of talking about company growth and and you know happy customers, and that's that's the if, for some reason whenever experimentation culture is brought up, it just talks about marketing in general. It's not just about stats and math. It's just about what are we doing in marketing. When we talk about SEO, it very easily gets into a, like a echo chamber of organic search. When we talk about analytics, it gets into like tagging and data engineering. So experimentation seems to be like multidisciplinary by definition. And, and you know, it's, it's about all things growing a company, not just about doing surveys and, and doing A-B tests. It's just a yeah. weird because you don't get that with all the other, other parts of the T. Just experimentation seems to be so close to the heart of company growth. Yeah, I think the, the reason why Ton and I say the same things is because we, well, we're, we're, we're of a similar age. Ton is younger. Um, <laughs> much more, much. He's, he's a much more fresh-looking baby, um, but um, <laughs> but we also, yeah, we, we come from the same background. Really, we 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 also come from like usability, and we come from a time before Google Analytics. Yeah. Uh, um, so, and I think we've 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 really also like grown together, uh, and more or less in the same direction, and and we we are both really passionate about experimentation being that bigger yeah, thing exactly um and not just this like niche you know button fiddling and, stuff this this is not what it's about and, and, and like analytics again when we do it it's easy to get caught in the little nitty-gritty like i'm just tuning tags and i'm building pipelines and it's easy to forget the bigger picture that you're trying to service product growth or, or service uh -huh. design or, or, but with experimentation, you don't really have that luxury. You have to think about the broader picture all the time. Uh -huh. You have to think about like what we are doing here is going to establish for many visitors, the very brand attention that we are trying to get from them. Like this is the core principle what we're trying to do here. So it's, it's fascinating. I haven't really, I have to rewrite the whole stupid handbook now because this is so much <laughs> revelations here. No, I, I think it, this is why you have to be um, intentional about the experiments that you run. Mm. Uh, and you should have a conversation with, like, we're an agency, uh, but in-house, you have, you have to have a conversation about, you know, what are we trying to achieve as a business? What are our KPIs, uh, our most important KPIs to work on right now? Um, and everything that you do, the research that you do, the tests that you run, the changes that you make, should be geared towards that KPI, not just yeah. like, oh, I saw something on this random page that I think could be better. 
Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see million things on million millions of pages that could be better. Are they? Are, are they an important business problem to solve? Are they an important customer problem to solve? Yeah. Those are the two questions to, to always ask. So true. And people should start from that, not from... I saw something on Amazon, on, on, on Walmart, <laughs> and I need to A-B test it right now because otherwise I'm not going to... With my 10 visit, monthly visitors. I'm definitely, let's just say, uh, else that I'm definitely not going to uh, be nominated as an A-B testing influencer this year. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's this wicked the words thing i wish we could talk about this for another hour we'll have else on again because we, we, we just got to again. the after we, we, my disruptive uh, mm-hmm. beginning we got to the interesting stuff in the last five minutes so we'll definitely have to have else <laughs> and i'll be i'll mute myself for the entire next interview i promise <laughs> and just let her talk i'll mute myself yes. too and just, just, <laughs> you, no, we need to all. we need to get you full time because yes. this, this was so this was so fun this was so fun and uh, i wish we uh we could talk about this the whole, uh, you know, for another few hours. But mm-hmm. else, let people know how they can connect with you, how they can find you. Where are you speaking this summer? And if I'm, I hope I'm going to see you. Um, I'll be speaking at the um, Experimentation Elite Conference in Birmingham, which is in the beginning of June. I'm sure there are dates for it. Uh, it's just that I am right now... <laughs> dubious about what they are but it's the beginning of june <laughs> um and people can reach i can find me on linkedin i'm no longer on x because i despise elon musk with a passion stronger than fire uh so uh, it's not that i'm a big fan of linkedin but still it's it's not elon uh <laughs> so yeah you can find me on linkedin you can you can send me a message else at agconsult.com that's my email so yeah happy to chat with uh with anyone about user research and about experimentation in general Thank you so much. I'll make sure uh, that if you're listening to this, you can uh, go into the description or the episode notes and uh, and uh, find else and connect with her. But please don't email her. Just 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 don't. There's no purpose. There's no purpose. Just don't try to sell her. We we see you. A/B testing vendors. We see you. We yeah. see you. <laughs> uh, Give us a break, please. Uh, um, thank you so much for thank being you so much. here. Else, thank it's great you. To have you on. It was great to chat with you. <laughs>